this presentation is, well, the, the title says Kit Back Bashing the Future. So it's basically about how one person can make VR by themselves. Um, or that's what it turned into as of 3 in the morning last night. So bear with me. A lot of these slides are kind of wordy. Um, so as my mom would say, if you ask her what I do, uh, sh that's a quote from her. She says, he does computers. Um, <laughs> I started very early. I've always been interested in, in new technology from you know my first speak and spell to now with VR headsets. Um, I uh, dropped out of high school um, when I was 16 and started working at Rockstar Games as a, as a game tester, making, uh, working on the first Grand Theft Auto game, actually. Um, and now we're like, I think it's almost like 17 years later or so, and I'm still doing video games by myself now, though. <laughs> um, so how did it start? The road to VR. See, this is the text I was talking about. I didn't know what I was doing. I just wrote all my... <laughs> I'm going to read off slides for a little while. It gets more, more media-heavy near the end. So, uh, as we all know, uh, Oculus ran a Kickstarter for the Rift about two years ago now, a little over two years. Um, and uh, I was late to that. I didn't, didn't actually see the Kickstarter happen. I... I saw some some little videos, like their PR videos, that went with their Kickstarter later, and I was like, "Wow, like this is happening! I can get this thing." Um, and uh, at the time, a friend of mine had just gotten me back into uh, Second Life. I don't actually play Second Life, but if, if you guys don't know, it's a it's like a online persistent virtual world, uh, user created content. And uh, I started a store there. Um, just selling assets that I made in, in like Lightwave, which you guys probably won't know. It's like an old 3D software, um, still viable. Um, and as luck would have it, I, I had about $350 uh, saved up from sales in Second Life. So I, I spent that money on my, my DK1. And uh, it arrived about, I don't know, I think at the time it was like a month I waited. And uh, I was super stoked. I got the... VR, man, I got it. I pulled it out of the, the thing and I put it on and it made me deathly ill and the content was horrible. There was nothing. I, I, had, I had nothing to play in. I was super disappointed. D to be fair, there were a few things. There was like a, um, uh, what is it called? Titans of Space, which is a really nice kind of like flying around the solar system thing. Um, but it wasn't what I expected. What I expected was to put it on and see like, you know, Cyberpunk, Blade Runner, something, something like awesome, like the VR I've been waiting for, and it, and it wasn't there. So uh, I had to make it, um, and uh, luckily the the DK1 came with trial licenses for, as at the time it was UDK, which is the Unreal Development Kit, and uh, Unity. So I dove in. Um, at the time, I was working as a as a, like a freelance VFX artist for for um, independent films and uh, and a security guard and a mascot. <laughs> I was just uh, filling my time, so 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 I had time to uh, to sit down. And one night, I went crazy with with Unity and uh, built a little demo. I pillaged some some assets from the internet. Um, it was like an old church, and I filled it with things I I like and just miscellaneous models I had. A lot of stuff from Second Life. And uh, just made like a, a, the most believable kind of space that that I could make because th there wasn't a lot of that, um, you know, motes of dust floating around, nice lighting, kind of kind of like trying to get presence from from the DK1. Didn't want to move because I knew it made me sick. Um, so I made this demo. I just called it the room. I wasn't aware of the crappy movie at the time, um, and re released it on uh, the Oculus forums. The feedback was amazing. People were making um, YouTube videos and raving about, like, oh, wow, this is like, I feel like I'm in this space, and it's really cool. So that was good. That was good news. So I, I, I made a, another demo shortly after that called The City, which um, at the at right around then, the Oculus's best practices document came out, um, which was trying to help us avoid some of the sim sickness issues that were there. Um, that nobody really knew how to fix, but Oculus kind of took their best guesses at. 
And I tried to, with this demo, kind of adhere to that. Uh, absolutely no locomotion. You were in uh, a city street, in the fog, giant towering buildings around you. Still kind of, it was more of a cyberpunk atmosphere. I was started heading that way. There was uh, video screens with, with geishas on them. And giant 100-foot robots uh, walking through the streets around you. So that gave you that kind of sense of awe in VR, right? Like you, like you look up and you could feel the scale, which was really powerful at the time. Um, because no, no one had even done that yet. No one had tried, like, let's do giant monsters. Like, let's try, like, playing with scale. So I released that. Oh, and at the, at the end of the, the robots walking through the demo, they get closer and closer to you as they're, they're walking through the streets, and eventually one kind of steps on you. Um, which wasn't intentional, it was just the animation happened to lead the robot there eventually. Um, more praise on, on YouTube, and that was it. I'm done. I'm, this is what I'm doing. I'm going to make VR. Like People love it. I love it. Let's do it. So I started making uh, Technolust, which is my, my baby. It's my main, my main game. It's, uh, it'll be an Oculus Rift launch title, um, first quarter, 2016. Um, I know the date, but I can't tell you. <laughs> uh, so uh, Technolus started. Um, I had no money. I was I was you know working working these part time jobs and freelance. So I wanted to keep it super simple. I, I I built a a small kind of hacker desk area, a lot like if any of you have seen Dread, the the new uh, Judge Dread movie. There's a um, a guy who who is like the security guard for the for the apartment complex. He's got banks of monitors all around him. And, th and that was going to be the game. You were like a security guard, because I was a security guard at the time, and write what you know, right? So uh, th that was that was it. You, you sit at this desk, and um, people would come up on the video monitors trying to break in or like uh, delivering pizza. And it was kind of in the same vein of, of a game called Papers, Please. I'm not sure if anyone's tried that, but it's... Um, it, it plays a lot with kind of uh, moral dilemmas, um, but with a super simple kind of game structure. Um, all of the assets, aside from uh, the few I'd, I, I had lying on my hard drive from, from Second Life, came from, from the asset store, the Unity asset store. Um, f all free stuff, because I, like I said, I didn't have any money. Um, so I built this, this, I thought it was a, a great looking space, uh, with this beautiful window with like this, $70 cyberpunk city asset that I bought outside the window. And as, as I started to program the game, I looked out the window and I was like, no, I can't, I can't do this. I don't care. Like, I'm getting up and walking around. Like, some sickness and the Oculus be damned. So I needed money. So Kickstarter. Back to Kickstarter. Um, and uh, we just skipped ahead like 10 slides. Hold on a second. Oh, no. Where did I put that? No, that's right. Okay, so uh, yeah, went to Kickstarter, um, ran a really successful campaign over a month. I needed, I wanted thirty thousand dollars, which would be enough to stop me from starving over the course of the year for development. And um, we got sixty-four thousand, which ends up at fifty-eight after Kickstarter takes their cut, which is great. That I was set two years, um, but I had a crappy old computer. Um, so $64,000 can buy a lot of nice computers. So I went, <laughs> I went on this website, Origin PC, and uh, started building a custom computer there. And in the end, it, it, I, I checked the price, and it was like $8,000 American. And I was like, no. I'm like, it's, it's beautiful, but I can't do it. So uh, what do I do? I, I, called, I called them, and I said, hey, guys, I just ran this pretty successful Kickstarter campaign. Uh, VR is going to be the next big thing. Like you guys will probably make your own VR rig. How about we work something out? I'll give you some some product placement and some billboard space, and you send me an eight thousand dollar PC. And they said, "Okay, <laughs> <laughs> awesome, thank you." So here's uh, an example of of some product placement. Nobody notices. This is the beautiful thing. Um, I've never had anyone say to me, "Hey, what's with all the ads in your game?" No, it's a cyberpunk city. There's ads everywhere. It's great. <laughs> Right. Um, I don't know if you can see that. That that's that's the computer. Um, 
business partner of mine, Morgan, model it for me. Um, and they're all over the place in the game. Everybody's desk has an Origin PC. But there's also a, a keyboard and a, and a laptop in there somewhere. So now, where are we? we, we so now the slide is out of place, but uh, we're making VR for everything. We, we meaning me. Um, <laughs> I've got uh, every headset. I, I counted the other day. I think I have about 15 headsets, not counting cardboard in my house. You know, that's like two PlayStation VRs, uh, every iteration of the Rift. Um, and there's weird ones that you guys haven't seen, like, uh, was it like the HDK1, which was just the DK1 with an HD screen. And uh, I'm, I'm going to start a museum when it's over. Um, so these are, these are some of the headsets. Uh, that's slide from another presentation, but that's fine. So here is a little sizzle reel of for my company that I threw together last night at 3 in the morning. If you can hear oh. No video. Put it down. Oh no. The whole presentation's video. If the video doesn't work, we're screwed. <laughs> There's some swearing also. I'm sorry. What do we do? Uh, <laughs> no, I don't. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Nope. Oh, Crap. Can you right click on the Mac? Control click. Control. Nope. Hmm, it's weird. If I skip through, I see the frames. Oh no. Maybe if I go over no. Nope. Yeah, sorry, this is my first PowerPoint experience as well. Uh, oh well, I'll scrub through it. Anyway, this is um at the beginning there, that's Jack Septic Eyes, a very popular YouTuber. Um swearing at my game in disbelief. Oh, this doesn't even work either. Oh that's fantastic. No, I didn't bring the file. Should have brought the file. No, it's embedded because it's it's skipping frames, and the sound is there. Yep. Ah, oh boy. Anyway, all right. So it's a really cool video. <laughs> um. So now, oh, this is gonna kill me. Cause, like, there's like five videos in here. All right. So. Uh, now it's not just Iris VR. Um, I met some guys at uh, the local Toronto VR meetups that Stefan runs um, that were doing some, some photogrammetry work in their, in their spare room in one of their houses. Uh, they had, at the time, 12 DSLR cameras, and uh, they got me to come in because they were interested in Technolust, um, stand on a pedestal, and they rotated me about, I don't know, 15 times while they took pictures of me. Um, and there's a video that shows a photo scan of my head that we don't have, but uh, we decided to th we should work together. I found them a, a, a partner to, to fund them, um, so I co-founded that company with them, and now they're doing, like, we have 120 DSLR cameras, and we're doing, like, really great uh, digital humans for photogrammetry, or for VR, um, as well as Occupied VR. Um, I hooked up with them to do uh, a project for the CFC about, um, it was like a David Cronenberg retrospective for TIFF. Um, that worked out really well. Um, founded that company with them as well. And they're doing, um, as was mentioned in my intro, a lot of like client-facing um, work, mostly 360 video stuff. God, please work video. Huh. Yay. Checking in. Kit bashing is the process of finding simple everyday objects and, as is popular in science fiction, reconfiguring them into spaceships, sets, or objects used by the characters. As cheesy as it sounds, the only limit with this method is your imagination. In Ridley Scott's Alien, the production team raided various scrapyards and collected enough parts to create the majority of the Nostromo set, including the Nostromo miniature itself. 
This is a method that can be used effectively regardless of budget. So that's just kind of a, a brief ex ex explanation of uh, kit bashing. Um, and uh, so, so uh, as you heard there, uh, uh, th this is a huge thing in sci-fi. If you watch anything, like, take the two major ones, Star Wars, Star Trek, um, the, the Borg ship from Star Wars is basically uh, all the all the leftover scrap pieces when you punch out models from from like plastic model kits uh, all smashed together into a cube. Um, things like the the lightsabers in Star Wars are are plumbing supplies and and old flash bulbs from cameras screwed together and and made into something interesting, which is is great. But where do, where's my junkyard? Where's my where's my my model kits? And uh, the answer is. The Unity Asset Store. Um, Unreal has an asset store as well. It's 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 not as as populated, and uh, you know there's there's a lot of junk, but junk is is great. Um, one person's trash is another man's treasure, or something like that, right? Um, so, on the asset store, you can get entire environments. Here's a here's a Middle East environment. You know, for se seventy five bucks, that's reasonable. If you if you paid an artist to build this entire environment, it would cost you you know. 75,000 bucks. <laughs> um, hopefully he's made that money back. Um, and taking, taking an environment asset like, like this uh, and, and kit bashing it and mixing it with other assets like, uh, like some, some beat up old buildings, some, some like sci-fi structures, you can put together, this is a shot from Technolus, this is like the wastelands area. Um, looks nothing like Afghanistan anymore, aside from maybe the sand. Um, you can buy prop sets. Uh, so this is like a little hospital set. I use this this light in particular everywhere because that's what lighting looks like in the future. <laughs> Everyone's got hospital lights. You can see it behind that monitor bank there. Um, there's even entire kits of just what we call greebles, which is basically what you get from bashing a kit, <laughs> which is perfect. Um, another video here. Doesn't look. Oh, maybe. Let's try. So last night I I bought a morgue asset um, and decided to just try and whip together a little level um, that would fit into Technolus. So this is this is how the asset comes. It's just uh, everything laid out that's in the pack. I think it was twenty five dollars. And everything you'd need for a morgue, basically. Um, some more cool hospital lights that I'll probably use elsewhere. Um, I'll snap together prefabs. Uh, so this this is all just the morgue kit at this point. Um, usually the first thing I do is fix the lighting. Um, in Technolust, everything is dark and uh, kind of moody. So I'd turn off the ambient light and uh, kind of bump up the contrast of everything. It looked dark on here, but in, in VR, I find anyway, dark stuff comes through really well. Um, so you, your eyes have time to adjust to it, and uh, looks good. So, so now I'm pulling in some other assets from other kits. There's a, like an industrial fan from somewhere, a sci-fi light, some, some cables, um, just built-in Unity spotlights. Uh, I don't know how long this goes. I hope it's not too long. <laughs> uh, finish building the walls. Clean up a lot of stuff, right? Because I don't need all those cadavers and stuff. It's not a not a horror game. Um, trying to cyberpunk it up with some some harsh blue lighting. Uh, I don't want to give away too many of my tricks <laughs> aesthetically. But, uh, that's one of them. Nice harsh shadows that, f from lights pointing in directions that they wouldn't ever point in the real world. Uh, oh, my my patented particles that I actually ripped from the Tuscany demo that came with the DK1. Um, just modified them to look more like dust motes as opposed to, to little pieces of fluff outside. Um, more sci-fi junk from other kits. Uh, you know, in, in total, this... 
this entire level with all of the assets has probably cost me like, you know, $120 or something and an hour of my time. So, you know, anyone can do it, which is scary that it feels like I'm one of the only people <laughs> that have figured it out. <laughs> it's good for me right now. Um, that's more like hospital pieces. Uh, that's a, from a kit of just like, um, they're like cryogenic pods or something. Garbage is very important. In the real world, there's, there's junk everywhere, so I always make sure the floors are dirty. Um, everything's dirty. Everything's got dirt on it. If, it. if it's too clean, it's it's not believable in VR, so this is a lot darker than it looks in the Rift, obviously. Um, but this is kind of like, it's done. This works. We can we can build a game around this, right? It's a uh, robot morgue <laughs> in the future. <laughs> it still needs a lot of work, but like th you saw the time lapse that was literally under an hour, um, and you can you can put something together that uh, hopefully looks like AAA quality. Um, I don't know if I should stop this video before I go to the next slide. Will it blow up if I don't? Let's make sure. Oh, I don't even have a mouse, so we're going to have to let it play out. Yeah. All right. So that's good. All right. Where are you? I see a picture here. Yeah. Anyway, it's a picture of the DeLorean from Back to the Future. <laughs> I don't know why it's not showing up. It's on here. Um, Uh-oh. That's bad. Maybe I did need to stop that video. And now none of those slides are coming through. Oh, PowerPoint. No mouse. Oh. Back one. All right, anyway. This should be a picture of the DeLorean from Back to the Future. Um, it's a perfect example of a kit bash uh, and why, why it was done. Um, you're, making, you're making a movie, and you need to have a time machine. Uh, do you build a time machine from the ground up? Well, we've got this really cool car that we can rent uh, that is halfway there. We'll stick a food processor on the back, maybe some like s stuff from, from the lighting guys, and uh, there you go, time machine. Tape some cables to the side. Um, then I have another shot that's of a DeLorean. Oh, does this work? No. DeLorean that, uh, that I made uh, for a game called Cursor. Um, I didn't make the DeLorean. I bought a DeLorean, just the car, and did the same thing. Just put some pieces on it, tilted the back tires sideways, and there you go. Here's your Back to the Future DeLorean. Uh, and incidentally, Cursor, which is a game I've released on Gear VR, uh, it's in the works for PlayStation right now, is an asset you can buy for $70. I bought it on sale for like $30, but it's a complete game. Just needed some, some polish with the art. I have lots of screenshots of how beautiful it is that didn't seem to come through. Um, escape? You're crazy. No. Now you've done it. <laughs> Why do I have no mouse? Oh, it's there. Do I have to drag it? Other way? Ah, there you are. Hello. All right, play from current slide. Yay! So that's uh, that's a shot from Cursor. That's that same Unity asset with. Uh, that's not that slide, anyway. Um, yeah. Uh, so how do you how do you program all this stuff, right? Well, you don't have to do that either. There's a there's a great asset on on the Unity asset store called Playmaker. Uh, it's it's very much equivalent to. Um, in Unreal Engine, their, their Blueprint system. I find it a lot more simplified than Blueprint, and, but more or equally as robust. Um, so I've never, I've never done a line of code in my life. I've got four video games under my belt right now for VR, and not one of them has a, a single line of code. There might, there might be some code that I hacked out of somebody else's stuff and pasted into my stuff, but I don't know what it means. Um, <laughs> you can do everything with, with kind of node-based trees. If you know the terminology uh, and what you want to do, you, you can see on this slide, I'm not allowed to step out of my box here, but it says, uh, like, to start the scene, fade in, the scene fades in, 
you know, play level, load level. Uh, if player enters this box, animate this and play the sound. Um, so yeah, you can uh, you can do it yourself. Where's that mouse again? This way. There we go. Uh, so then this is a video that probably also won't play. Oh, that's fantastic. Yeah, man. That's a bummer. Uh, well, this was going to be a whole bunch of stuff, like shots from the finished product of, of Technolust uh, showing how you can build all of this stuff from, from scraps and basically build an entire cyberpunk world. I should have put screenshots in here instead of videos. But there you go, you can look up the game. Actually, if you go downstairs, we're doing a demo. Uh, it's just a cinematic loop showing different environments. And almost none of the artwork in there is, is custom. It's all either taken from the asset store, stuff I already had, or you know, there's, there's the odd custom piece, but it's all, it's all there. So in conclusion, nope, not so much. You're gonna crash on me now, PowerPoint? Awesome, cool. All right, well, PowerPoint crashed. So, <laughs> um, yeah, so you can, you can make a game uh, or multiple games and experiences with just one person and a little bit of elbow grease and a couple hundred dollars to throw to assets on the asset store or elsewhere, you know? There's places like Turbo Squid and uh, stuff like that. So, sorry, 90% of my videos didn't come through. So, that's the end. <laughs> literally crashed. Computer's toast. Sorry, Stefan. Yeah, questions. Sorry, go. When you're designing your, your experience, you can make anything. Do you have a personal uh, storyboard? No. Nope. Uh, it's, m yeah, usually more to do with the, the story of the game. So I'll know I need to have X environment because that's where the story takes place. And I'll watch a bunch of reference material maybe. Um, not that I have time these days, but a lot of the stuff's in my head, you know? Like, uh, so there's a, there's a Chinatown area. I'll, I'll watch Blade Runner a million times and, and kind of get a feel for that. And then just find what I need, you know? If I need a building, I don't build a building from the ground up. I find an asset pack that is buildings. And then I need neon signs, so I'll make, grab some neon signs and throw them in. And basically, what you would do if you were shooting a film, right? You're not, gonna, you're not gonna build everything yourself from the ground up. You're gonna find a good starting place and, and you know, clutter it up and build from there. Right. Is there a narrative? Or is there no, the game, the game definitely has a narrative, yes. Uh, yeah, so, yeah, I guess I never explained that. The, the uh, Technolust game is actually, um, it's kind of a new genre of game that's been coming up lately. Uh, I guess they call them like exploration games. Uh, it, there's a narrative that that leads you through all these different environments, and there's gamey type stuff like collectible items and and things like that. Uh, there's a bunch of mini games in there. You can go into the arcade and actually play other games, like in the arcade machines. Um, but yeah, there's a story. It's it's kind of like a point and click adventure style game, but made for VR. Oh, sorry. You don't have like experience. Do you have a game that you would want to make? Because like one of the things I you said is you took the uh, the flash from Crash Two and you modified it to a Blade Runner style. Mm. What, what does that involve exactly? Okay. Yeah. So the question is um, if I have any art experience, uh, <laughs> like modeling experience. And uh, yes, when I worked at Rockstar, um, I kind of moved through the ranks there. I started as a tester, ended up doing some level design, then it was game design. Basically stood over everybody's shoulders and watched what they were doing and learned how to use these, these modeling programs. Um, as far as the, the, the modifying the modes of dust in Tuscany, it was um, literally just sh like shrinking them and changing the color a little bit and like adding, adding more of them. Um, but yeah, I can, I can model if need be. Uh, I should mention that as well. I didn't know how to use Unity before before I started this stuff. Like I, I picked it up and 
just saw how great it was. You can literally just drag anything from your hard drive and it takes it. It's like, oh, you got a model? I'll take it. You got some sound? I'll take it. And the, yeah. Oh, sorry. Uh, you. <laughs> Oh, no, I used, uh, sorry, he, he was asking if my entire workflow is in Unity. The answer is no, I used everything. Like, I probably have about 15 programs open on my desktop at any given time. You know, the entire CS suite, whatever, yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah, so um, Unity is, is a, a game development platform, you, or engine. You, yeah, it's, it's, doesn't really have a lot in it, game making wise. Like, it's how do you explain what a game engine is? <laughs> it's 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 like it's the renderer that that shows the end product. So, and like I said, it takes just about anything you throw at it. So, it's your kind of stage. Um, yep. Yeah, so the economics of outsourcing, it, it's getting getting harder for VR because uh, like VR developers are in huge demand right now and uh, there's not a lot of like uh, like game engine generalists that are, are available for hire. But uh, a lot of the art assets in Technolust, like the, um, I basically have uh, the giant blimp from Blade Runner. I got a guy in the UK who's just finishing school uh, I don't even know how I came across him. I think he he like just solicited me, asked asked if I wanted some models done, and he works super cheap and does amazing things because he he uses it in his school portfolio, right? So I gave him I think for that that blimp I gave him like forty bucks, which is crazy. And I use it everywhere because it's beautiful. It's like every time you look up in the sky, there's a damn blimp with a video on it. But <laughs> so. but I still I still work with him, um, and actually we're we're using him for for other projects and paying him a proper proper freelance wage but yeah people are out there a lot of a lot of students um, and then you know hopefully once the game starts making money or more money we can hire more artists full-time uh, yeah Yeah. Wait, can can they? Can they? Could they possibly make money because they've made it the last like five years? Ago? Oh yeah, in Second Life. Yeah. Okay. Can can you make money from from building assets alone? Yes. Like I, uh, I took about maybe two weeks of free time and built a bunch of junk for Second Life. It's all like I have a. It's like a curio shop. So there's weird things like a like a zomb mounted zombie head for your wall and like weird movie props like the zombie barrels from uh, from Return of the Living Dead. And you, you make those once and you put them up on the asset store and I've been making money for two years off of it. It's just like people come across your store and they're like, oh yeah, I need this. So I think that's like a great way for just a digital artist to make money, make assets for, for these platforms like Unity, uh, Second Life and yeah, it's endless stream of money, right? But you couldn't take a second life asset and pour it over to the Unity assets. You can't take someone else's asset from Second Life, but if you made the asset in the first place, yes. And I'm sure there are ways you can. Ri yeah, you could you could rip the models from Second Life, but I don't think you're following their terms of service if you did. <laughs> but yeah, um, sorry. Yeah, Ellie. I haven't hit any limitations of Playmaker, actually. Um, yeah, no, the, the, the main limitation is just trying to visualize a logic problem, right? Um, sometimes you start, you start building out a, a, a tree to accomplish something, and it turns into this massive spaghetti, and y you're pulling your hair out, and then you go away, and you come back, and you're like, oh, I could do this with, like, three boxes. Like, what was I thinking? You know, it's, it's more of a... Yeah, like lo logic problems than limitations. And uh, I've actually uh, gone on their message board. I, I needed a function that would just save all of the global variables to a text file.
because basically that's how I do all my switching in the game. It's just like pools of, of like, has the player seen this or have they picked that up? Um, have they completed this area? Um, I went on their message board. I was like, hey, can you guys like add a save all feature? And they're like, yep. Three days later, they had a build of it. So it was perfect. Uh, the, the question is, th will the demand for just 3D assets be going up? I, th I think so. Um, I, because, because stuff changes, like the way we do textures on things changes, like the, the quality of, of the assets gets better. Like I wouldn't want to use some old Unity asset from five years ago. Uh, today, but I might want that same sort of asset. So someone's got to redo that, right? Um, and then, like our our photogrammetry company is banking on that that people will want high quality digital humans, right? And we're going to sell those on asset stores and stuff. So yeah, I think so. Yeah. Uh, in the game. Yeah, it, yeah, it's it's narrative driven. Um, and, and how does it actually manipulate the black and Yep. Well, but well, you can move around in the game. Uh, so, I actually developed a locomotion scheme for VR to to combat uh, simulation sickness because I don't know if this would get too long. This might be another talk, but. Uh, so hold on, you're not creating narrative. In the game. No, not anymore. No, 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 no. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. But. We figured out tricks. That that was a big problem early on. Is is we all just assumed that Oculus was going to take care of these problems and like they would figure out how you move around in first person VR and not get sick, and they hadn't, and they still haven't. And I'm sending them builds, showing them what they can do. Um, so yeah, there's been a lot of problem solving on that end. But I think we've got it. Good, cool. Oh wait. Oh, <laughs> smart ass. All right, cool. Thanks.